Welcome back to the channel everybody, it's Nark here and I'm watching you guys as always, but today's video is in reference to Spider-Man and the character of the Sandman. Now the Sandman is one of my all-time favorite Spider-Man villains in the comics as well as also the movie, Spider-Man 3. I liked his arc and I feel that it's interesting and a little concerning that they brought him back alongside Alfred Molina and possibly William Dafoe as the Green Goblin as we saw from the trailer. Now, of course, folks, I'm referencing of the all the Raimi Spider-Man villains here because their arcs were actually perfect, in my opinion. I don't know. I feel that the character development for all those characters in that verse was actually really well done. And yeah, coming from a Spider-Man fanboy, McGuire guy at least, it is a little bit of a bullshit punch to those who liked Garfield's people as well as Holland's people. But I can't deny the fact that despite the being great character development, in a, in a sense to the character arcs that we saw in Spider-Man 3, it doesn't change the fact that Sandman was in one of the worst superhero movies ever. And don't get me wrong, I love Spider-Man 3, but you gotta admit, it's garbage. Anyways guys, he's back in No Way Home. Originally, I didn't think he was. I thought that it was perhaps maybe just an elemental from Mysterio, and maybe it was just that. But after seeing a leaked image just recently, as recent as a few days ago, I'm convinced now that maybe I was wrong and that the Sandman is indeed in this movie. And of course, with that being said, it's going to be that video topic of the theory of what his purpose is in this movie, just like the other supervillains. So I'm going to be discussing the Sandman today and hope you guys enjoy this quickie. So without further ado, Let's talk a little bit about some of the Sandman's background, and then let's get into the possibilities of why he's here. So, in Spider-Man 3, the Sandman was revealed to be the man who killed Uncle Ben, or as we thought. Basically, Flint Marco, whose real name, was escaping from the law when he went into this genetic accident, this freak experiment that turned him into the Sandman. And after a while, the Sandman was trying to take money and steal because ultimately his daughter was sick. That was his arc. His sick daughter needed medical attention. He didn't have the money for it. So in order for him to seek money, he had to get money. And the only way he knew how to get money was by stealing. This, of course, has Spider-Man interfere in his actions, which causes the Sandman to go more irritated as time goes on. His arc would end up being complete at the end of the movie after the defeat of Venom when he confesses to Peter that the night of his uncle's death, he wasn't the one to do it on purpose. It was a freak accident resulting in his partner running in the backside of him, causing him to pull the gun and shoot at Uncle Ben. Ultimately, this emotional revelation would prefer closure to the Sandman character of this verse and Peter as well as he fades away into the sun. So ultimately, his arc was left in a way complete, despite being in a discombobulated movie, but now he's back. Let's talk about the theories of how he's returned and why he's returned. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and I'm not going to show you the photograph, because this photograph, in my opinion, I believe, is just incomplete visual effects. And the fact that it's on the internet, it surprised me, but no, like no other leak has, but I'm not going to post it. I'll leave a link down below to the... Instagram account that posted it covered Marvel who I follow and I think is pretty accurate with a lot of these things and you guys can take a look at it but to give you a description basically in the hall or the cells of where these supervillains are coming from being teleported to Sandman is in one of them he is in one of them facing alongside the lizard Dr. Octopus and Electro but we don't know if it's really Thomas Hayden Church coming back as the Sandman because this visual effects just show him as just his sand form and we don't really get to see what he looks like. For all we know, this could be a totally different Sandman from the one we saw in Spider-Man 3. Like many of the villains rumored to appear in this movie, they are different variations of the villains we had seen prior and they might look similar, but they're not the same person, if that makes sense. So we're going to bring out two possible theories here onto the Sandman's involvement in this movie. The first one, let's talk about him being a good guy. Maybe the Sandman is in this portal in his cell because of his powers, because he was a foe of Spider-Man at one point, but he doesn't want to be there. Maybe he sees what's going on with these other villains who are there, and after they get released, maybe he takes the initiative to go and join forces with Spider-Man, or maybe he and one of the other Spider-Man variants, besides Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, have a confrontation which causes into an elite fight, but has a slight change of heart. 
Maybe we find out more of his arc following Spider-Man 3 or whatever this variation of Sandman's arc is. Let's talk about now the possible bad, which could be true. Let's just say, for example, in the universe of the Raimi-verse, things are cleared up between Peter and the Sandman. But in this new verse, maybe this Sandman variant didn't have that closure. Maybe his daughter did in fact die, and we can assume that she died in the Raimi-verse as well, but let's just say she actually did die. Maybe this Sandman is hell-bent on vengeance and just doesn't care about doing the good thing anymore and is just a radical and megalomaniac supervillain who's bent on destruction. Ultimately, if this is the case, it would make sense because I don't understand why he would be in the film as a villain. If you had seen the snippet of the trailer where he has the sandstorm and the electricity engulfing with the assist of Electro, it does make a lot of sense in a way why this guy would be in it if he was just a villain who had the unfortunate luck and the alternate what if in this multiverse. But I could be very wrong. Thomas Hayden Church has not mentioned anything or has not thrown hints like Defoe, Garfield has mentioned in the past in reference to the new Spider-Man movie, but it doesn't surprise me if we're going to see him in this movie as a villain. And I'm kind of hoping we do. I'm hoping that we get rid of that other arc and we just kind of focus the Sandman on his villainary and what he is. So folks, let me know what you guys think down below. I'd love to hear what you guys think, and also if you agree with me, feel free to contribute down below in the comment section. This is it for this video. My name is Nark. I'm always watching you, and you know it. Have a great day.